Hello, hello, happy Tuesday. Just let me get my other screen set up here so that I can see your comments. So glad that you could join me today. Oh, it might be one more second here. You'll have to excuse the background noise. <laughs> um, one of the neighbors the is snow blowing or um, blowing their snow with their uh, neighbors is oh, snow blowing or blowing. Oh, I don't need to hear myself twice. <laughs> okay. Hang on. Nope, that's not what I want. <laughs> oh, come on. All right, guys. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> happy Tuesday. It's a little chilly here in Medicine Hat. Um, come on in and introduce yourself and say hi and where you're from. I'd <laughs> love to hear from you. Today's live, we are going to be working with the brand new Forever Maple Stencil. You might have to bring in another color of uh, cardstock here. But this one uh, features a whole bunch of cute little maple leaves. Yeah, and uh, there is a coordinating die, believe it or not, that uh, comes with this set. Um, everything today is uh, in the scrap and stamp shop. So this matches up with this stencil. So you have to find the etched label and you're going to put it at the bottom and then I've actually marked mine with an arrow so I know that that will fit over there. The key is is always to look for the etched label in the stencil so you know which side is face up otherwise your ties don't work. So just to let you know that's an easy peasy trick. All right so today we're just going to have uh, fun with our stencil today. I uh, was inspired by an image that I had found with some beautiful uh, fall colored leaves and it had this really kind of drippy purpley background so I wanted to mimic it with this stencil but we're also going to bump up our stencil today and I'm going to show you how to do that and it's actually quite easy and something that you can do quite quickly. Okay since we're going to be using a lot of water today I have decided to use a watercolor base uh, of paper because I think um, I did try it with, this was, oh, I can't remember. Um, if I remember, I will uh, put a link to this. Um, this is a paper also offered in the shop. One second, I know I've got it right here. Hang on. So this is a uh, Bristol Smooth um, Surface Strathmore paper. And it's actually quite nice and very smooth, obviously, to work with. So if you're interested in that, that's also in the shop. But I thought uh, it worked pretty well. It didn't work that much, so I'm quite impressed with it. But I figured I would try watercolor just because of the amount of water. Obviously. Okay, so let's get to working on our stencil. Okay. So, um, I have an oversized piece of watercolor because I'm going to cut it down. So, I'm not worried about placement here. I've got a thing of paint on my stencil. So I'm going to line everything up. And we're going to use... A pretty good amount of the heavy memo tape and I'm actually going to cut it in half because it's so beautifully wide that we can use it down both sides. I really want to make sure that this stencil stays in place. Actually, you know what, we're going to flip this up. I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the back. So it also stays on my work surface here. Well, let's position this paper where I think it's going to work the best. 
There we go. I'll tape down the other side. This is great. Um, great tape to use. Um, you can stamp your images and use it like a mask too because it's so wide. It's great for that. Hello, Carol. I hope all is well with you too. We're just having fun with stencils today. Okay, so today we're going to use, of course, my favorite ink. We're going to use some Catherine Pooler. We're going to use some Glitz and some Flame. Those are quite some good names, eh? Okay, so we're going to start with our Glitz. And we're going to put down a base. And we're going to be pretty generous with the ink. I want it to really stand out against our background. And you'll have to excuse the jiggles. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too bad on camera. Now I also wanted to let you know, not only is this product in the Scrap and Stamp shop, which I will put a link to at the end of the comment section. I'll see if I can pin it so you guys know where it is. But if you make any Catherine Pooler purchase between now and March the 30th, so Friday, um, you are automatically entered to win the whole O Canada bundle, or I think we're just calling it the Canadian Adventure bundle. And at the end of today's live, I will show you what the bundle consists of. And it's so fun if you're Canadian or have Canadian family or friends, or I mean, a lot of it's geared towards just nature too. So it will do many, many, many topics. Okay, so I'm just blending everything with glitz. Hello, Nora. So happy to see you guys here today. All right, so we're glitzing it up. Ha ha. Okay, let's put on our bright and brilliant flame. I'm going to use a smaller um, brush this time, and I'm just going to kind of go up from the stem and make it subtle. We're just going to almost do like the inner workings of that stencil. I'm going to do a touch on the, the partial leaf there. And I didn't bother to wash my stencil in between because the orange is really not going to contaminate the yellow on the stencil. Um, if you had two opposing colors, I would definitely wash the stencil in between. But because this orange color is darker, we're good. And it's not going to contaminate it at all. Okay, I think we got them all. <laughs> yes, Carol, the, the leaves and the beavers are super cute, aren't they? <laughs> okay. Uh, we are going to need this stencil again, so I am going to wash it now, And but we're going to spruce this little fella up just a little tiny bit here. So let's take this off, the work surface, set it aside just for the moment, and this is how I clean my stencils when I'm at my desk. Normally I take them to like the bathroom sink. I just use my water bottle and my microfiber cloth. Now you have to remember that stuff gets underneath. So make sure you lift it off. Wipe what's underneath. Now I've got adhesive stuck to my desk. So I'm just going to roll that off just so it doesn't get in the way. And then don't forget the back of your stencil too because it will get water underneath it when you spritz it. Same when you take it to the tape, or you take it to the sink. Okay, quick way to <laughs> clean your stencils. Okay, so first, before we go back and trap it with our clear embossing, which we're going to do, we need to kind of spruce things up on our leaves. So what we're going to do is we're going to make them a little bit more realistic. So let's bring you in a little bit here, a little closer. And what I'm going to do is put like the veining detail in the leaf. So I'm going to be 
fairly dark. Uh, my second example, it does have the veining, but it's very, very subtle. So for this one, I wanted to go a little bit darker. So we're going to go in and just mimic the veins. And they don't have to be perfect. I'm using kind of the grain of the paper, too, to get a little bit more detail because it's nubby, right? Like a, a watercolor has a texture for the most part, watercolor paper. So we're going to use that to our advantage. And we're just going to make things jumpy. Uh, leaves are not perfect. The veins are never identical from one leaf to the next. So this is a great way to kind of be artsy fartsy <laughs> and do your thing. If you want to put more veins or less veins or just keep it simple and just do like the main ones, like the top one, the top point, and then you can do like just that. Um, I like the effect of doing kind of the majority of the veins that you would kind of see for a maple leaf. And of course you could do this with other leaf stencils or even stamps. Uh, sometimes you might have a, like a solid stamp. Um, you could take this and do this to a leaf solid stamp and make it more, you know, detailed. So I'm just sketching sometimes i'm making them like fat like that and sometimes i'm just making them a line so and you can make them wonky um i'm using a brown today just a whatever you have for colored pencil i mean you crack out those crayolas they would work absolutely fine for this because we are actually going to trap all of this detail into this leaf so that we can do our background and you can do a little bit down it's, it's your art so you get to choose <laughs> what you do and again i'm just making things extra wavy because you know they don't make all the leaves the same otherwise nature would be boring and you can put alternate veins and big ones and small ones so I don't know about you guys but we are ready for spring here <laughs> um, we've had a really um, harsh winter for our area um, typically we do not get a lot of snow here in Medicine Hat I know it not a lot of snow in, in uh, Alberta crazy right um, we have a weird climate here. Um, we actually have cactus that grow, which is unusual for Canada. Um, but yes, we actually have cacti that grow in our city. Um, so typically we don't have a lot of snow. We get what's called a Chinook. And a Chinook is basically, it's a warm wind that happens in the winter. So we could have a day where it's minus 10 or minus 20 here. And then two days later, it could be plus 12 or more because of those winds and they come off the mountains. So we haven't had, I think we've had one Chinook all winter, which is not typical. Okay, we're almost done here. I'm just trying to catch all the leaves, put a little bit of detail in them all so that we can capture it under our clear embossing powders. So we are going to have some noise. <laughs> we're going to pull out that heat gun. Okay. And who doesn't love this color combo, right? Like vibrant purple. It's gorgeous. Okay, almost done. We just have the baby ones in the corner. There we go. So you can make things look a little bit more realistic. 
I mean, they're not totally realistic, but they're closer than what they were before. Okay, so I'll show you the, up close the detail. So again, it's subtle, but it's there. Okay. All right. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our stencil and looking for... Okay, I want to put this... Actually, we're going to do one thing. Okay. I'm going to bring in my splat box, my homemade <laughs> splat box, because I'm going to do some paint splatters. Okay. And if I don't bring in my splat box, I get it all, <laughs> all over my um, screen, which is just like right here. So you want to match up, match up the sides and, oh, here, there. Oh, sorry. I hit the camera. We're going to just hold it on one side. I think it should be okay. And we are going to use some macchiato ink. Sorry, um, I'm not totally on screen here. Just give me a second. Um, so I've just put a little bit on my plastic palette. And I've buried everything behind the, <laughs> the box. Do a tiny bit of water. You can use reinkers for this too. Okay, just a paintbrush, give it a good stir, and of course it would move. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're just adding a little bit of speckling to our leaves. If I can get enough paint on <laughs> my paintbrush. Sorry about this. Again, I'm having to... Hold it down a little bit. And of course you can go deeper and darker with splatter. I'm just trying to make it look like a maple leaf because I grew up in a maple bush as a kid. And my neighbors used to harvest the sap and make maple syrup. It's not an easy process, let me tell you. Okay, we're going to get rid of the splat box again. Sorry. Okay. There we go. We're looking pretty good. Okay, now comes the fun part. Um, I am going to wipe this down because otherwise I will contaminate my Versamark ink pad. And I don't really want to do that because it's a clear, sticky ink. And if you get it on your ink pad, then you could possibly transfer it to the next project. So again, don't forget the back. Okay, I will send somebody who's on the live today a card using today's background. So keep the comments coming. That's all you have to do to enter. I will do the draw within two minutes of the end of the live. So if you'd like to receive a fun little card in the mail, please keep the comments coming. Okay, so we're going to use Versamark, which is um, a sticky ink. Just making sure that my stencil is in the right place. Just jiving it in there. Because I don't, I want to try not and capture any of the white that's around it. And this is where you have to kind of be generous with your sticky ink. There's lots of different embossing inks on the market. Versamark's my favorite. I've been using it for years. And this will definitely come off your stencil. You do have to work it a little bit more because it is kind of a sticky ink. I suggest like a light soap and water. And a nice soft cloth to take it off your stencil. And like I said, I'm just trying to get into all those nooks and crannies. Okay. Set that off to the side. And maybe I should fix my camera. 
<laughs> I just noticed all wonky. Okay. I am going to just dust my paper so that my embossing powder comes off of it rather easily. I'm not worried about specks or anything on this. So this is just a super uh, clear gloss embossing powder. And of course, you can just do the upper leaves and then just have it run down your paper and then just make sure you have the ones that are kind of on the edge. And if you dump your whole entire embossing container on your sheet, you're good. Doesn't matter. I'm going to do a quick flick because I do have a little bit of stray, but I'm okay. Like there's just dotty spotties, um, but I'm okay with that. It just makes for a really cool design because we're not looking for perfection. And a little bottle of embossing powder. I've got like a thing of static right there. This will go a long way. You'd be surprised. So it's like the size of my two thumbs. But it goes a long way. Okay, we're bringing in the heat gun. I'm going to make sure that this is warmed up first. So turn it on for 10 to 15 seconds first. make sure it's nice and warm this will help prevent uh, warping of your paper because when the gun is hot it's ready to go it's ready to melt those particles so they go fast and all you're looking for is a change from like a mat you can see the ones that I haven't touched yet they're not as shiny but the ones I have touched now that are heated are shiny and you don't want to leave your gun in one spot for very long what happens is the embossing powder actually absorbs into the paper and it makes it look weird and you can also scorch your paper so keep your gun moving and just remember your paper is quite warm. You can use um, tweezers. Uh, I've seen people use clothespins to hold their paper for them. And there we go. So now we have shiny leaves. And what that means is that now these are going to resist the next thing that we put on here. Which is the whole purpose of embedding them. Okay. So next we are going to be using Glam. So this comes in an ink pad, but today we're going to be using um, the reinker because it's very, very uh, dark and saturated. Okay, so I'm going to go full on here. I have embossing powder stuck to my computer surface. Okay, and this is the reason why we used watercolor. So I'm going to saturate this with water. And don't worry if you have a little bit of leakage of ink. I'm going to do the whole entire surface. Okay. If you can kind of see my water is a little bit yellow. And that's just because it's picking up on any edge that's kind of not, not trapped underneath. So like I said, I'm going to be super generous with my water okay and then we are going to add our glam this is a much easier way to get a really really thick ink on your paper is by using the refill I'm gonna add just a tinkle of water that's it and we're, what we want to do is Actually, I'm going to add even more because it's super thick. And of course, when you do that, it's splatter. <laughs> so be careful what's around. Okay. And this is the whole premise behind getting it wet. Because I want it to wick down or drip down. And you can layer this up as much as you want. 
So I'm trying to get a fairly good saturation of ink towards the top because I want it to be quite dark. So I just keep painting it on. And if you go really thick, you can go right to the top. And you can add ink wherever you want. And you can kind of get it to drip down. I'm just brushing it kind of into those nooks and crannies along the edges and you can just add it where you think it needs to go. See how it kind of wicks down the water so it looks drippy, right? And that's kind of the effect I want to have. So I'm kind of mimicking areas to so, and this will curl. So you could put it down on like a hard board. I do not have one. I really need to invest in one um, for purposes like this. So again, I'm just increasing the level of pigmentation at the top here because I want it to look like it's quite thick on the top and then it kind of go gets watery towards the bottom. So you can just thicken that pigment in there. And see how we kind of get the drippy part? And that has to do with the amount of water spread across that surface. Okay, so let's take a quick two seconds, do a quick cleanup here. I'm going to move this out of the way before I put my hand in it because that would be, that would just cause chaos. <laughs> so we're just going to clean up our splatters and our little bit of our mess here. Okay, and again, we're going to take our heat tool just to make this process faster. You can absolutely allow this to dry naturally, but for live purposes, let's get her all dry and if you choose to put more pigment or more ink over top you can absolutely do that you'll get some really cool drippy effects for sure my cord is stuck there we go and keep it moving Okay, so my cardstock or my watercolor paper is quite warped and I am going to go and dab off some of the excess ink that's sitting on top of those leaves just with my fiber cloth. Okay, so you can also just make sure you don't have any goobers on, the, on your work surface is dry it from the back. That will also help flatten it out. You can also put it through your die cutting machine. I know, like crazy, right? Just sandwich it in between, uh, like just grab a piece of copy paper and put it in between the layers, like fold it in half and then send it through your die cutting machine with just the plates. That will help flatten things too. And of course you can play with it. A little bit I'm just trying not to spread any anything there sorry this just takes a little bit of time because that paper does absorb quite a bit of water it's wet it's pretty pretty wet okay the next thing that we're gonna do is I love gold splatter 100% sign me up so we're going to bring in the splat box again. Okay, here we go. Hopefully you guys can see this a little better because I can't see my screen. Okay. Um, water would be good. We're going to go fairly dark red or dark gold, which has kind of a little bit of red in it. And this is a very pigmented paint so you have to give this a stir this is i can't remember the name it's on the tip of my tongue this is also in 
the shop. Highly recommend these inks. And there's some really cool pearl ones. Okay. And then we're just going to add a splatter. And I like to use a toothbrush because I'm a... I don't like the big blobs. It's just personal preference. Uh, I would prefer tiny little splatters to big blobby splatters. So the finer the brush, the finer the splatter. So toothbrush, toothbrush, can't talk, um, works really well for this. And this just pulls that goldy yellow orangey color up and accentuate that in the design here and there we go and again you can absolutely 100% just let this naturally dry and you know I took pretty much the curl out of the paper with just drying it from both sides which is nice because sometimes they can be rather warped <laughs> Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, I have the cover for it. I just don't, I never put them back in the sleeve. They're Kiritaki. Mm, maybe. They are Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors. Now, I'm not sure if uh, Rhea has the gold. These are like the gold set. Um, but there is a, there's at least two palettes or three palettes of their paints highly recommend 100 percent. so yeah very cool eh so that's what today was all about is just kind of stepping up your stencil so if you have a like a shaped stencil take a look at it and think oh how can i up my stencil game can i make it look more realistic can i trace it and make it almost like a stamp so for instance let's just grab piece of random paper here and this is another way you can bump up now it depends on oh that one's super fine I'm just going to use this is just a sharpie fine pen um, just try tracing the design and it of course kind of creates it like it was an outline stamp Right? You just have to go fairly slow. And of course, you could use colored pencils to do this. You could even do Copic markers to trace this. You could almost even color them in within the stencil. So lots of cool ways to use stencil. You could also stamp. So if you put this into your, let's say your Misty, um, tack down your paper and then put your stencil and then take a background stamp you can actually get that background stamp to deposit its image into those voids now the voids have to be fairly open you couldn't do this with a stencil that was like had very fine details because it just you couldn't press that background stamp through it but you can absolutely get some kind of impression. I mean, if you had a plaid stamp or something, um, that would be really cute through the maple leaves. So you can make your own plaid maple leaves. This one is nice and open, so you can do that. So even though you're kind of using your stencil, you're using your stencil in a different way. Like I said, go slow because you don't want to do things like that. Um, and now I can go and color them, like with my Copics or even my watercolor. Um, just something different or a way to, to look at your stencils different. Okay, so this is really sticky, but I just wanted to show you guys again. So if you shop in the Scramp, <laughs> the Scrap and Stamp um shop between now and March the 30th. If you purchase any Catherine Pooler product, so there's inks, dyes, stamps, paper, uh, any of those refills, if you purchase any of that between now and Friday, you will be entered to win the Canadian Adventure uh, 
gift prize. And it contains the Moose Crossing 6x6 pattern papers. So super cute. There are eight different designs and there's three sheets of each. You can win the O Canada stamp set and it comes with coordinating dies and this has like all the iconic Canadian symbols. A cute little beaver. So adorable. Uh, you can win the stencil. So the forever maple stencil and it's dies. Plus, there is one other thing that I don't have, and that's the Yukon sequence. So if you make that purchase between now and Friday, um, you can you are put into the draw for this Canadian Adventures uh, prize pack. So just something to think about. Um, I think we're done for today. I certainly had a ball creating these because... I just love that deep, dark color palette. I mean, see, I added even more ink to this one than today's. So it's quite dark. But I had fun. I hope you guys did too. Hope you learned something new. Or at least going to try something new. Um, I will draw a winner on our live commenters about two minutes after the live is done. And I will see you guys again on Sunday for the live at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And again, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye now.